Hello and thanks for joining us. To our viewers in Korea and around the world, it's 6 a.m. on Friday, April 18th here in Seoul. I'm Mark Broom and you're tuned in to our ongoing coverage of the Sewol ferry disaster. The desperate search for passengers continues this Friday morning, some 44 hours after the ferry started to sink. Overnight, the number of people confirmed dead rose to 25. 271 people, including a great many high school students, remain unaccounted for. 179 people were rescued on Wednesday, but unfortunately no new survivors have been found since the day the ferry sank. Now, let's go over live to our Guan Suwa, who is standing by at the Pengmok Harbour in Jindogun County, where search and rescue operations are continuing. So, uh, fill us in with the current situation there. Mark, the rescue operations continued throughout the night despite unfavorable weather conditions. Uh, flares were shot into the sky and helicopters and unmanned robots were used too. Now, despite that, unfortunately, instead of hearing from survivors, uh, more dead bodies were recovered and none of the bodies were found inside the ship but on the surface of the water and the maritime police says this could be due to the change of the tidal waves which could have brought the bodies up to the surface from inside the ship. So how will rescue operations continue today and also how are the weather conditions looking down there? Well, rescue crews are continuously uh, trying to uh, enter the ship but have yet failed to do so. However, compared to yesterday, the weather conditions are getting better. Uh, the winds have weakened and the rain uh, is getting weaker at this hour too and the precipitation is expected to stop today. And also cranes are soon going to arrive here at the site to help with the further progress. And what about the families of the missing ones? How are they coping with what is such a, a dreadful situation down there? Well, many families have come here to Pengmo Harbor to the site to see the rescue progress with their own eyes. Now, to my right, I can see the tents installed for the families and emergency crews are also on standby. Now, that's all I have for now, but I'll be back with more later on. Back to you, Mark. Yes, thank you, Soa. Of course, efforts must still be made regardless of how desperate the situation appears to be and search and rescue teams there are still working tirelessly, of course, around the clock to try and find more survivors. Now, let's go live to our Yulian, who is at the Jindo Indoor Auditorium down in the coastal city there, where the families of the missing are waiting in what must be complete anguish. Lian, how are the families holding up? Hi, Mark. No one here got much sleep throughout the night. The families here had to bear the news of bodies that rose to the sea surface with absolutely no updates on any survivors. Uh, about 200 family members of the victims are here and also at the Pengmo port. Uh, and I've been seeing some family members here distraught and just uh, staring into the air. And some have been going up to the podium to the relief center personnel throughout the night demanding for a more thorough rescue operation. Last night past uh, 11 p.m. local time, the principal of the Tanwan High School and a total of 12 teachers from there came to the auditorium to give an open apology, but that only seemed to rattle up the parents here even more who were not able to contain their anger. Many here of us here are glued to the TV monitor that shows the live updates of the rescue operations. Uh, for those that want to see for themselves the rescue operation, uh, the relief center here is providing shuttles to the Pengmu Harbor. Yeah, we can't even imagine what they must be going through down there. And of course, our thoughts are with all the family members of the missing at this terrible time. Uh, but how are they being looked after and are they being counseled by anyone? Mark, this is an extremely hard time for these families of these victims. They've been under an overwhelming amount of stress. Some have even fainted yesterday as they heard news about the rising death toll. There is a special care center set up here at the gym uh, where nurses and medical personnel are taking care of people and trying to help them get through this truly traumatic moment. There are also about 500 volunteers on site to help out with the entire process, uh, including those from civic groups like the Red Cross and Welfare Foundations. They're supplying families here with uh, relief supplies like food, raincoats, hot packs and blankets. Mark. 
Thank you for your report, Leon. Leanne. That was our Julianne reporting from the Jindo Indoor Auditorium, where many of the family members of the 271 missing are gathered, of course, waiting for news of their loved ones. And now, with details of any new developments, we're joined by Kim Jian at the News Centre, who's been following this ferry disaster for us for the last couple of days. Jian, what do we know about what is happening? What was happening in the vessel at the time it started sinking? Well, Mark, the control center from Jeju Island sent a warning signal to escape four minutes after the first distress signal was sent by the cell ferry at around 8:55 a.m. But no passenger in the ferry tried to escape the vessel for more than an hour. This is thought to be because the announcement sent by the crew members of the vessel told the passengers to stay put, saying it's more dangerous to move around. Students were seen wearing life jackets, but were waiting inside the ship, missing their chance to save many lives. Mark. And we hear that some. Really, rather awful scamming texts have been sent out that take cruel advantage of this awful tragedy. Well, with the nation's focus on the rescue efforts, the government is warning about a text scam. The text falsely indicates that it is a message from Yonam News Agency and includes a link to a video of uh, the rescue operations at the site where the ferry is located. And smartphone users who click on this link, a malicious app is installed that will leak the personal information embedded in the device. It then induces the users to install a fake banking app that will then extract financial information of the users. It is not yet. Sure, how many are affected by the scam at this time? But the government is trying to prevent further spread of this text and plans to distribute a vaccine to the users. It's awful that even at times like this, there are people trying to take advantage of of others like this. They're suffering. It really is a uh, really awful. Now we've seen video of the captain of the ferry cowering in front of the cameras. Investigations are ongoing on the 60-year-old. Uh, Ejun Sok into whether he abandoned the ship due to negligence.、Uh, what should he or any captain in this particular situation done in a time of crisis like this? Well, around 10 crew members, including Captain Lee, is known to abandon the ferry without making sure the passengers were put into safety. Not abiding by a manual laid out for the steps to take the crew members in case of an emergency. And what the captain and crew members should have done first was to make an announcement to the passengers, explaining the situation, what is happening in the vessel, and what you have to do to escape to safety. And then the crew members should have stayed put to make sure that everyone was on life vessels. And then they should have checked the time the guard ship or rescue team was going to arrive. And finally, they should have stayed with the passengers at all times and helped. Them to get on board the guard ship, but as you can see, not even one of these was followed by the captain and the crew members of the cell ferry on that unfortunate day. Yes, very sad situation there, and、uh, I'm sure we'll see some legal proceedings in the future there. Now let's go live to our Connie Kim.、Uh, she joins us from the Korea University Ansan Hospital, where the largest number of patients are being treated. Among the seven other hospitals treating patients, Connie, what's the atmosphere like? Hi, Mark. I'm coming to you live from Korea University Ansan Hospital, which is a which is a 10-minute walking distance from Tanon High School, where more than 320 students were on board the ferry that capsized two days ago. Now, I can tell you that the atmosphere here is absolutely tragic, with outcries for the deceased ones filling the funeral hall. Names of the deceased passengers are shouted out here and there. Some wordless, looking despaired, and I hear many parents still crying out loud, hugging each other, saying they couldn't even talk to their children before the vessel went down. The bodies of the three high school students and one teacher had been transported to the funeral hall in this hospital yesterday. And although Tanon High School is now temporarily closed until next week, many students in school uniforms and those injured from the accident are in the funeral hall to say their last goodbyes to their long-lost friends and teacher. Now, tear-stained faces and looks of despair of the families of the deceased ones show just how much they are shocked by the disaster and cannot believe they cannot see each other again. 
So sad. And uh, we hear quite a lot of the students who are injured are receiving treatment at the hospital as well. How are they doing? Well, most of the people receiving medical treatment here are students. They have received medical checkups, getting x-rays and blood tests. I spotted some of those people with fractured bones and bruises, not severely detrimental, but they are all in shock, some students even refusing to eat at all. They were asking whether their classmates have been found yet. Hospital officials note that the mental trauma of these patients is really concerning, especially because they're high school students who are, most, who are at the most detrimental situation. They say they'll mainly focus on mental therapy to help them recover from their shock. Back to you, Mark. Thank you, Connie. And our thoughts are also with those injured students and anyone uh, who was on board that ship. OK, Connie, that was our Connie Kim reporting from the uh, Korea University Ansan Hospital, where many of the injured are being treated. President Park geun hae paid a visit on Thursday to the search site and the nearby gymnasium where many families are still hoping and waiting for news of their loved ones. Paulie reports on the impromptu and at times very tense meeting as parents express their anger at the government response. President Park geun hae arrived at the site of the search and rescue operation off the coast of Chindo on Thursday afternoon. The visit comes the day after the Sewol ferry sank 20 kilometers off Pyeongpung Island. Upon her arrival at the nearby port, Korea's head of state inspected the area and was briefed on the ongoing rescue efforts carried out by the military and Coast Guard. She said she was very concerned that the rescue efforts were slow, even though so many personnel and equipment were being mobilized. Park told officials that every minute was critical and that the safety of the rescue workers was also a priority. Park later visited the indoor gymnasium where the families of those missing are gathered, taking questions and offering words of support. Many angry family members shouted and screamed as Park spoke, demanding answers and venting their frustration over the lack of progress to save their loved ones. Some even attempted to rush the front of the informal debriefing. Others expressed doubt that the government was doing its best to handle the situation and complained of the lack of updates. President Park promised the families that they would be immediately informed about any developments as well as the next steps in the rescue operation, including the arrival of three industrial cranes on Friday, which will be used to try and lift the ship. She told the families that while bad weather conditions are hampering the search, they should not lose hope. Paul Yi, Arirang News. As search and rescue teams race against time to try and find more survivors, they'll be assisted on Friday by the arrival of those three salvage cranes. But it won't be an immediate fix. As our Jimmy Young report, it could take months for the ferry to be lifted and transported. Three floating cranes are on their way to the accident site to help lift the 6,800-ton Sewol ferry on its side. Salvage efforts will start Friday as soon as the 3,600-ton floating cranes arrive from shipyards in Chine and Koje, respectively, both located near Korea's southeastern port city of Busan. One crane is expected to arrive in the morning and the other two in the afternoon to waters off Jindo Island in the southwestern Jeollanamdo province. However, maritime experts say it may take two months for the huge cranes to lift the capsized vessel due to the sheer size and weight of the vessel. 
There are other factors to take into account as well. The depth of the waters at 37 meters is one such factor. Others include high tidal waves and the fact that the ship, which was loaded with freight and now sea water, could now weigh up to 10,000 tons. Crane engineers say it will take at least two weeks to deploy chains around the huge vessel. And once the vessel is lifted to the surface, water will be pumped out slowly, after which time the ferry will be moved to nearby land. Meanwhile, until the cranes arrive, search and rescue operations will continue for anyone who may be still alive. Kim young Arirang News. Now, as we mentioned earlier in this broadcast, many more people might have been saved in initial rescue efforts had they not obeyed a command to remain in their seats or rooms. Testimony from survivors, text messages and even video have collaborated the fact that onboard announcements asked them to stay put and to not attempt to jump into the sea. It was only after one hour that a final announcement was made for everyone to get off, but by then it could have been too late for some. Son Jung-in reports. It's been reported that when the accident occurred, the onboard announcement to the passengers was to stay where they were without giving any specific directions. The same announcement was known to have been heard repeatedly for one hour before they finally told all the passengers to jump into the sea with their live vests on as the ferry was going to sink. Many say the delayed warning to get off the ferry could have caused a bigger tragedy as many passengers heeded instructions and stayed in their rooms and were later unable to escape as the vessel went down. A female voice informed us of the situation through a speaker. She said the rescue workers would come soon and she told us to stay put. The Sewol is one of the biggest ferries in Korea and most of the equipment is electric, including the doors and gates inside. Some experts speculate the generator may have gone off when the ferry began to tilt to the left. It's highly likely the power cut off as the ferry tilted. There could have been a total blackout, meaning doors would not open. Even if the doors were open, the steep incline of the floors may have made escape much more difficult for people trapped inside. Many people were screaming as the floors inclined and all the equipment and people slid down. The worst scenario is that if there are still people trapped in the cabin, there won't be enough air for them to breathe. Everyone is praying with all their hearts that this won't be the case and that all those unaccounted for will be rescued safely. Son Jung-in, Arirang News. We now turn to details about the ill-fated ferry itself for any clues on the cause of the accident. The Sewol ferry is one of Korea's biggest passenger vessels. Some experts suggest the ferry's recent expansion may have weakened its dynamic stability and could have been a factor in its capsizing. Kim min reports. Built in Japan in 1994, the Sewol Ferry is one of the biggest liners in Korea. Chang Ejin Marine became the owner of the vessel in October 2012 and began operations in Korea in March last year. The vessel's normal travel route was from the western port city of Incheon to the resort island of Jeju, which takes about 13 hours. It is 146 meters long, 22 meters wide, and weighs over 6,800 tons. It has a capacity of 921 passengers, 180 vehicles, and 152 20-foot containers. Comprised of five floors, the engine room is located on the first floor, while the second floor is a cargo compartment. The remaining floors are the cabins, while the fifth floor is usually reserved for VIPs. Among the 475 that were on board, more than 350 passengers were designated to the fourth floor, with the majority believed to be students from Tanwan High School. There were about 80 passengers on the fourth floor, which is also equipped with a restaurant, information desk, karaoke room and convenience store. Fears have grown that many of those unaccounted for could be trapped inside their cabins or in other areas and have died. However, there is still hope that some will be found alive, which would be possible if they were using a giant air pocket to breathe, as the tip of the ship is still above the surface. Meanwhile, in a separate development, Seoul's YTM reports that the vessel only had the capacity to carry 804 people in Japan, but was expanded when it came to Korea. If we compare the two, there is a difference in the height of the liner. 
The deck has been transformed into cabins, allowing it to carry 117 more passengers, while the mass of the vessel also increased by 239 tons. The expansion of the ship is now also being looked into as another possible cause for the accident. Kim min Arirang News. Harrowing text messages sent by students stuck in the capsized ferry have been shared with the public. In one of the verified texts sent just minutes after the accident, a student writes of despair in the face of certain doom. In others, students exchange words of love. Connie Lee has the details. At the time the ferry was sinking, students trapped inside the vessel sent text messages, and most of them reveal fears that they might not make it out alive. Students telling each other, I love you, are seen throughout the exchange in one chat room. One student even writes, I think we're going to die, showing feelings of hopelessness as a ship was tilting. In another chat room of students, one passenger writes, if I ever hurt you, please forgive me, and then ends with, I love you. It has yet to be confirmed whether the students who sent these messages have survived. Now an exchange between students and a teacher. The students ask if the teacher is okay and if he or she is wearing a life vest. The teacher responds with exclamation points, yes, and tries to reassure the students, telling them to stay where they were and to put on a life vest if they can. The conversation ends with words that possibly show a loss of hope among those on the ship. They all tell each other, I love you, which may prove to be the last messages they'll ever send. A video taken by a cell phone also reveals students staying put inside the ferry when it started to capsize. And stories from survivors show desperate attempts to live, with some passengers breaking through windows and jumping into the ocean to be rescued. I just jumped into the water and started swimming. It was really cold, so I tried to swim as fast as I could. When the ship was completely listed, the water just rushed in. The water really came up to my face, not giving me any time to think. But he was one of the lucky ones who actually came out of this disaster alive. Connie Lee, Arirang News. And stories are emerging about what happened on the ship as it was listing, and many of them include acts of heroism. Uh, Huang Sangi reports on the selfless people who risk their own lives to save others without a moment's hesitation. Amid the chaos of one of the worst ferry disasters in South Korean history, stories of heroism are ringing through the hearts of the public. Female crew member Park ji -young, who was found dead on Wednesday, remained calm when she ran out of life vests on the third floor and hurried upstairs to grab more for the panicked students. When one student asked her why she was not wearing a life vest, she said crew members would be the last to leave the vessel and that she would leave after everyone was safe. The 22-year-old, who tried to save lives even when the cold seawater came up to her chest, lived with her mother and a younger sister. High school student Tung Taung did not give a second thought to taking off his life vest for a friend. He was killed after throwing himself off the ship to save another of his friends. Known as a friendly and caring person, Chung had always dreamed of majoring in physical education in college. 58-year-old Kim hong Young saved 20 passengers by himself as the ferry was sinking. Kim reportedly tied a fire hose to curtains and pulled nearly two dozen students from the first floor of the ship to the outside so that rescue helicopters could reach them. And another story of heroism is the rescue of a six-year-old child. The young girl named Kwon ji was rescued by four passengers, as you can see in this video in the final moments. During the disaster, she was apparently split up from her parents and brother, who are unfortunately still among the hundreds that remain missing. Hwang sang Arirang News. Turning to an update on Ukraine now, a meeting of top diplomats from Ukraine, Russia, the EU and the US has produced an outline agreement towards de-escalating tensions in Ukraine. The plan calls for the immediate dissolution of illegal military formations and the deoccupation of government buildings in eastern Ukraine. In exchange, separatists would be given amnesty for all but capital crimes and Kiev will launch a process to public consultation that will give provinces more power. 
The agreement comes as turmoil continues to riddle eastern Ukraine. Three pro-Russian militants were killed by soldiers when about 300 separatists attacked a military base in Mariupol earlier Thursday. And those are the stories we have for you at this hour. Korea Today is coming up in about 30 minutes' time, and they'll have more coverage on the search for survivors of the Korean ferry disaster. We'll be back at the same time on Monday. Until then, goodbye.